بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين We continue to focus on the book of Allah عز وجل worshiping him by better understanding his final revelation for us and for all of humanity Tonight we continue with the sixth chapter which is Surah Al-An'am We are told that this chapter has 165 verses and the meaning of its name, Al-An'am, we're told is كُلُّ مَا لَهُ خُفٌ وَظِلْفٌ مِنَ الْحَيْوَانَاتِ وَهِيَ الْإِبْلُ وَالْبَقَرُ وَالْغَنَمْ So we're told that Al-An'am is referring to livestock. Livestock, and this is basically every one of the animals that has a split hoof. It has a split hoof, and uh, this is basically everything of your camels and their family, the cows and their family, and the sheep and their families. And uh, subhanAllah, it's interesting, it just really dawned upon me just this minute, uh, the second, that in the English they say hoof, right? But in the Arabic it says, مَا لَهُ خُفٌ وَظِلْف خُف So it may very well be that the hoof in English comes from the Arabic of hoof, and Allah knows best. Anyway, سَبَبُ تَسْمِيَتِهَا Why is it named after livestock? انفراد الصورة بذكر الأحكام لأحكام الأنعام تفصيلا Why? Because this chapter explicitly goes into details with regards to legal rulings with regards to these animals of livestock for that reason. Well what other names does that have? لا يعرف لصورة اسم أخرى غير صورة الأنعام So subhanAllah this chapter does not have any other name that it's been known by except Al-An'am. So this is the only name, mashaAllah. Well, what about its general objective? We're told, تَقْرِيرُ عَقِيدَةِ التوحيد. The first thing is to emphasize and to restate and to establish the belief in Allah Ta'ala's absolute oneness. What else? إِثْبَاتُ nubuwa To also demonstrate and to establish prophethood. So that there is no issues with regards to anything of the beliefs or misconceptions that have been made against the Prophet ﷺ. So his prophethood. And the last thing is al-ba'thu wa nushur With regards to resurrection and the day of judgment. So these are the main focuses. Sababu nuzuliha. Why was it revealed? Well, we're told that this is a Meccan surah. وَلَمْ يُنْقَلْ سَبَبٌ لِنُزُولِهَا جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا So this fragment, this statement is going to be repeated any time. We're going to have a chapter that there is nothing specifically there that is authentically narrating to us that the whole of the chapter was revealed because of this reason. But, وَلَكِنْ صَحَّ لِبَعْضِ آيَاتِهَا سَبَبُ نُزُولٍ But again, as we've seen with the other previous chapters, that there are authentic reasons for some of the verses within the chapter having been revealed. Fadluha, its virtues and merits. The only thing that we have as far as its virtue and merit is the hadith that Imam Ahmed collects, where we're told that whoever contains, whoever has, whoever gets these first seven chapters of the Quran, that that person is a scholar. Right. Well, to conclude, the eighth point is the connection between the beginning of the chapter and the end of the chapter, okay? What is it that we have? We're told that الحديث عن تسوية الكافر وعبادة غير الله مع الله تعالى So the main focus that we see to be the attention that connects us from the beginning to the, of, the, of the chapter to the end and the way that it concludes is what the disbelievers have done of equating the worship of other than Allah Ta'ala as being equal to the worship of Allah Rabbul Alameen. So polytheism and idolatry, how the disbelievers are basically saying that it's, it's all one and the same. So Allah Azzawajal says in the beginning of the chapter, ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ يَعْدِلُونَ He tells us in the first verse, then those who disbelieve in their Lord and their Master, they are basically inclined away from Allah's oneness, His absolute oneness, Subhana, and if they're inclined away from His oneness, then they're inclined towards idolatry and polytheism. وَقَالَ فِي آخِرِهَا 
And they, with regards to their Lord, their Master, they are inclined away from Him. So SubhanAllah, the same, almost the same exact words that are used at the beginning as well as at the end, MashaAllah. Well, what about the connection between Al-An'am and Al-Ma'idah? We're told, الحديث عن ملك الله سبحانه وتعالى that it's about Allah's dominion and sovereignty the connection between both of these two chapters is that how? إذ ختمت المائدة بقوله تعالى because Surah Al-Ma'id the fifth chapter ended Allah Ta'ala says لله ملك السماوات والأرض وما فيهن وهو على كل شيء قدير and for Allah is the dominion, the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth and all that are in them. And He is capable of everything. وَفْتُطِحَتْ الْأَنْعَامُ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And Allah Ta'ala began Surah Al-An'am saying, All praise and thanks are for Allah, the one who has created the heavens and the earth. So naturally, the one who has created it it is His, He is the King, He is the Sovereign, it is His dominion, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here again we see how beautifully Allah Azza wa Jal makes the transition and makes the connection between these chapters. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to truly, Ya Allah, we ask You that You increase us in depth and in understanding of what You have revealed to us, Ya Rabb, such that it penetrates our hearts and souls and that it transforms us to be the best of your servants, the best of your worshippers. Allahumma rabbana ameen. Wa salli allahumma wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyin Muhammad.